Uh, before we get any questions, uh, uh, small groups. Uh, about last class? Yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think it's coming right here. Yeah, uh, things ahead, yeah. I, I guess since uh, you guys brought it up, uh, oh, I guess those words, yeah, what was like a lot of shakar? Uh, a lot of shakar means the, uh, the beginning of morning. Oh, is this the time of day? It's, it yeah. doesn't even say, okay, got it. that's fine. Right, got yeah, it. Right. That's it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, okay, you guys have your sheets or you? you uh, I didn't bring it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I have my notebook though. Do, do, you, have, do you have another <laughs> packet of sheets or should we make after class? Did you not have that? You were here last time. This, this is my first time. Your first time? Oh! No. Uh, right. Okay, so you have another notebook. No, just to get, to get a test sheet where you go. Um, do I have to do a high number and a from this and all that? No, you're really, you're feeling like it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. if by people mean us, <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. they know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Surely do. <laughs> Thanks, sir. For, for people on YouTube. <laughs> for who? For YouTube. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, it started. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna that? We, we have the technology. I don't do the editing. It's all done in the office, so it really depends on what uh, okay. Haley decides, how much attention Haley gives to uh, um, <laughs> editing the videos. So. <laughs> okay. We've been going through quickly the various malacha all thirty nine. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good use of our time just to go through them all, and you should. Some of them are very relevant, some of them are much less relevant, and uh, um, and they are all of the Hilchot Shabbat books that are recommended from the CRC or the ones that I recommend all have uh, set, you know, go through these in detail. You know, um, this book, we have two copies of this book, you're welcome to borrow one, if, or you know, I would recommend one volume at a time, or, um, or just leave it here, or whatever, but we, um, we have, they're on the shelf, there's right by the photocopy, I think it says conversion books or something. Books that are on the CRC. So we're going through the Malacha. We're going through the 39 categories of labor on Shabbat. Um, and uh, we're, we're doing it relatively briefly, just as an overview. But um, there is all the books that, uh, Pelfa Shabbat books on the CRC curriculum, the books that I recommend all have um, more detailed uh, explanations of all of them. And these are, and these are fairly important. Um, so the next one, we've been going through uh, the list of connected to uh, the list of malachot leading up to bread. Um, I think we did. We did. Uh, we did. Um, Stop that winnowing. Do we do threshing also? Yes. Yes. Great. So next was borer. Borer is sorting. Okay. This is a very very complicated. Um, you know, if you're in yeshiva, you could spend six months three months on borer. Okay. It's a, or I don't know exactly. Not really exactly. It's a very very uh, complicated. Malacha, it's also very practical. Sorting uh, things from uh, taking the bad things that you don't want by um, from what, out of what you want. So you have, um, for example, after you after you thresh, you have um, the grain kernels to get together with some small pebbles and rocks and dirt and things like that. And winnowing won't work to get rid of the grain, the pebbles because it's too heavy. Winnowing only removes like the chaff, the light things we've blown away by the wind. And you can't use a sieve to remove the pebbles because they are, oh, sorry, I'm asking you that. Because they're too thick, you can't remove that. I'm sorry, what? So if you do the, yeah, and a sieve, because it, they're around the same, they have the same size as the grain. So, you so have what's to, a sieve? You can't sieve something you said? No, I'm saying a sieve won't work to get rid of a pebble. You have to remove it by hand. That's boer, that's the forbidden malacha. Okay, everything else we like threshing and winnowing, we already got. Those are those are those are already forbidden and those are earlier stages in the process. Once you get to the sorting, that's this current stage, okay? And that is also forbidden in Hashabat. Okay, so the definition of Bower, any form of selecting from or sorting of an assorted mixture or combination can be considered Bower. So this includes removing underside objects or matter from a mixture. Or, uh, for example, removing the spoiled cherries from a bowl of cherries. You're going to serve cherries, you take out the bad ones before you put them on the table. Um, let's say uh, you're serving a mixed nut dish, and you're going to take out the macadamia nuts, because 
yeah, like macadamia nuts, okay? Um, about taking the top off a strawberry? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, nervous, okay? Um, trimming away a brown spot, an apple or a banana. Removing bones from a fish, picking the bones out of a fish. Um, maybe even peeling fruit. Okay, these all could be considered borer. For the fish, away, yeah. that's when you're serving it, not when you're eating it. Because you're eating it, and there's a like when you eat one or you almost eat one. You you don't like you don't want to eat the bone. But then you've removed the fish from the bone. Right? Oh my goodness! So everyone's uh, <laughs> look, look who's right here. Okay, so let's <laughs> let, let's uh, so let's not, so that, that borer is taking the thing you don't want, add the thing that you want. Uh, it's removes sorting. Taking away bad things um, in that way, separating things out. Um, maybe even, you know, uh, sorting laundry, putting the socks in the sock drawer, then doing the underwear drawer, etc. Uh, maybe you have your laundry, dirty laundry, and take away that you're going to you know, sort them into half. You have some, uh, you know, some dirty silverware got mixed in with your silverware. You're going to take away the dirty silverware and leave, uh, you know, only the clean silverware. That's all. That all could be considered boring. It's all acts of sorting. This happens all the time in our kitchens, in our lives. We are selecting and sifting and sorting and moving things in one place to another. That all could be borer. Um, it's not all forbidden. And the thing that is permissible uh, is if it meets uh, three, three conditions. There are three conditions that, that make it permissible, plus some other rules. Mm -hmm. It has to be, um, in Hebrew, miyad, biyad, and ochel mitok psolet, okay? Let's do the last one first, that's the most important. Ochel mitok psolet, so if, if all three conditions apply, pertain, then it is permissible. So, ochel mitok psolet means the thing that you're selecting is what you want, not what you don't want. So, you can reach over and, ooh, I'm gonna take the, 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 I'm gonna take the tomatoes out of your salad because I love tomatoes. That's okay, as opposed to, ooh, take my tomatoes, I don't like tomatoes, hmm. okay? If you're taking the thing you want out of the mixture, that's one, that's step one for making it okay. Second, it has to be use, uh, using your hand as opposed to using a special sifting sorting tool. Not a sieve, not a strainer, just using your hand. Not even so, a fork? So fork, uh, fork's a relatively recent invention. Uh, forks only became popular and common in uh, America, really, in the 19th century. It was pretty, uh, you know, I think even before, and, and maybe a little bit earlier in Europe. Um, travel guides, the mid-1800s said, uh, you know, for people going to America, I would say, if you'd like to use a fork, bring your own, because they don't, they don't have them uh, in taverns or anything. Anyway, so um, forks over time, in the recent halakhic history, um, became considered an extension of your hand. So a fork is okay. But, but, you know, it's a relatively newfangled invention in the history of Judaism. And the third characteristic for it to be okay is it has to be uh, for immediate use. You can't um, source something and then you can leave it aside. You can take all the, uh, take all, I love cashews, I'll take all the cashews out of my mixed nuts, and then I'll put them in a jar of cashews that I'll have in my cupboard. That's, that's miyad. That's not miyad. That's, miyad means immediately, right? So, uh, right, right, but that uh, was the like first condition. Okay. So, miyad means for immediate use. Uh, biyad means with your hand, not with a kliya miyuchadakas, not with a special tool. And, um, um, Ochel mitok psolet means you take what you want from what you don't want. Okay, that would be now. So, so let, let's go back to some of these problems. Taking a bone out of your fish, that would be uh, using your hand. It's for immediate use, but you're taking what you don't want out of what you want. That's no good. So what you can do is you can put the fish in your mouth and spit out the bone. You can put the watermelon in your mouth and spit out the seeds. Can you can you use your hand to take the Bone out from no, your mouth. From, from your mouth. That's not. Yeah. Once, once, it, once it's, you can take it out of your mouth, but, okay. but you can't take it from the fish. No. Right. right. And then okay. for the watermelon, I mean, you probably shouldn't be eating seeded watermelons. But if you like take it and then a seed falls out of the watermelon, you falls weren't, out, falls out. You weren't trying. Falls so. out. It falls out. But you, can, you can't okay. pick the seeds out. Okay. okay. You eat the watermelon. You spit out the seeds. We're gonna see this watermelon, which I guess now are Everybody. almost the kind you can get. Um. um if you're, you, you can remove, if you have a, a peel that surrounds something, removing it is still considered, is okay to do. It's not considered a violation of, of, of the, I'm taking the orange peel off the orange, I'm taking the eggshell off the 
egg. I'm taking the cream off the top of my unhomogenized milk. That's all okay because it's impossible to get to the food other than by removing the peel or the shell or the thing around it, right? So that's that's a okay except exception to the rule of taking what you don't want when you want. So what about taking skin off a chicken? No. Uh, you can't eat it. Because it doesn't fat. You can eat. You could eat this, right? You could eat this. It's not like an orange peel. The skin is edible. If you don't like the skin and you're removing it, that could be a problem. Yeah. On the other hand, maybe if, if other people like it, maybe you're not. I and mean, if you eat a little bit of uh, maybe if other. Yeah, maybe if other people you like it. Your skin somehow. Yeah, maybe if other people, maybe it's not really, it could be that both, they're both edible, just that you prefer not to eat the skin at this point, then maybe it's okay because you're not, it's not really so, it's not really trash, it's just something that you'd rather eat the meat and not the skin at this point, so maybe that's okay. Um, you can also, you have a brown spot on your banana and you, you can cut it away, the brown spot, and also cut away a little bit of good banana with it. So then when you're discarding, you're not separating the bad from the good, you're just Scooping out a piece of banana that includes bad and good. Um, if you have a fly in your soup, you can't take the fly out with a strainer, a slotted spoon, take a real, take a spoon and take out the fly, the fly with the soup. So that what you're removing is, um, as a gross example, I'm sorry, but you know, um, uh, right? You're not, you're not just removing what you, the psoet, the bad part, you're removing like with some good part as well to avoid this problem of barrier. Um, some are very strict with barrier, including things that aren't food items, like you have, let's say you empty your, so you run your dishwasher on Friday before Shabbat starts, you, uh, dishwasher ends, you're about to light candles, you just open the dishwasher, turn it off, then you go light candles. Then you want to set the table, so you open your dishwasher, it's filled with clean dishes, you want to put them away. So you have all your silverware jumbled together in the dishwasher, and you're putting the forks here and the knives there, and the spoons there, is that barrier? So no. some say, why? Well, because you're not picking anything bad from it. So even sorting, even if you're not picking, even if you're just sorting something into two piles, right? Your socks are underwear, mm -hmm. you're sorting things into two piles, that also is where even if neither of them are bad. Um, if you say that the silverware together is actually a tarot, it is actually a real mixture, then to sort it into pieces would be a problem. What you should do is, what they say is, take all of them and scatter them on the counter, on the floor, so that they're sort of spread apart. And once they're spread apart, you can then put them in the place where they belong. Yeah. Individual. And put them in the place where they belong. Yeah. But then you're going to destroy that tarot, that mixture. Others say, I don't know, if you have silverware in a big uh, pile, it's, you can still look at it and say, that's a fork, that's a knife. That's, you know, they're, not, they're not like mixed together the way um, yeah. grains, you know, rock pebbles are in grain or uh, bad cherries are in a bowl of cherries, or just silverware in a pile, and, and so it wouldn't really be a right, true like trend. So, so, so personally, we're leaning to that silverware, I just want to say that, but there are those who are strict, and you may encounter that opinion, and that would be the rationale mm -hmm. um, for that as well. Okay. I want to say that for air. Yeah, removing... Mm. Some, you know, a lot of, you know. You drop your lollipop on the floor, you can rinse off the dirt and then eat it because it's for immediate use and it's rinsing, it's cleaning, it's not sorting. You're not removing the dirt from the lollipop that's mixed together, you're just cleaning off the surface or something. So that would be, that could be okay. Some are not as strict about not washing dirty fruit or dusty fruit and uh, so, you, know, you can rinse, you can clean, you just can't, you're not you're supposed to soaking, let's say, grapes into water, like, you know, because then you're removing the dirt that comes off, it's just rinsing it, that's, that might be okay, so, and that, some say that's okay. So, lots of other things we're going to move on, I think, okay? Any other questions at Boer? Okay. We'll do a few more things, okay? Um, next one's token. After you've had, now that once you have your grain, you then grind it into flour, right? You're leading up towards bread. That's our okay. Um, so that's defined as breaking down, reducing into little parts until you can use it in some new way. Okay. So that's um, that. That's token. T o c h u. Tochen in English, T O C H A I N, maybe, that's how they spell it here. Um, so the definition is actually doesn't really have to be 
grinding something into a powder. It could even be chopping something into very small pieces. And um, um, uh, it, it seems, it seems, uh, um, you know, it, it's, if you chop something so small that it really is like, um, Like something new, as opposed to a small bite. So, chopping lumber into wood chips for landscaping, that would be token, right? Because it's no longer wood, now I have mulch or, or wood chips, okay? Um, crushing rocks into gravel, that would be token. Um, uh, I'm going to, um, you know, slice vegetables into like make a little tiny little Israeli salad, right? If it's very small, depending on how the size, that could be a problem uh, or not. Okay, so there are. So, um, so let's see, there are four exceptions, we'll see the exceptions, okay? So, um, it only applies to things that, the prohibition only applies to things that grow, um, for, like plant material, things that grow from the earth. Um, there's, so things like, um, um, like making chocolate would be okay, right? It's not, or tuna salad would be okay, like, you know, um, and once something is ground, you can't grind it a second time. So if you take cookies and make cookie crumbs, that's not token because the cookie itself was made out of flour. It was already grinding to place already in the bakery or in the mill, and you're making cookie crumbs, that would be fine. Uh, if it's for immediate use, that's also fine. Similar to Burr. So you're chopping a salad to eat right then, that's also okay. Or so, salads you can do that. Yes. Um, or if you do it in an uh, unusual way, that could also be leniency, like you're going to do it uh, in a slightly less efficient way than you would do it if you're, so if you're making it like, so look, chopping cucumbers for a big industrial quantity of chopped cucumbers that I want to have in my fridge for, you know, to use day after day after day, that would be a problem, but if I'm chopping cucumbers for my salad and I'm going to eat, as soon as I'm done chopping, that would be okay. It can even be pushed back a little bit, like if I'm, I mean, I could chop the salad for that morning and then go to shul and come home and eat it. Because it's all, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm sort of like the next, I'm chopping the salad for the next available moment when I could eat that salad. Mm -hmm. I'll chop, and then I wake up at 8, I'll chop for half an hour, I'll make my salad, I'll go to shul, I'll come home, and I'll serve it to my guests at lunch. That's not immediate, but it's, co it's close enough because I've done nothing else in between other than make my salad, I'll go to shul, whatever. Okay. okay. One of the derivatives of um, this prohibition of chopping is the rabbi said you also can't use medication on Shabbat because medication used to be made, is still made by grinding ingredients up together to make powders, which are then put into pills or, or, or mixtures, etc. And so, lest you come to grind um, ingredients in medication, the rabbi said no medication on Shabbat. There are exceptions to this, as you might imagine. But the exceptions are, well obviously if, if, if someone is in grave danger, then you know, you would break Shabbat outright. If someone was in grave danger, you would drive to a hospital, you would, you know, whatever you would have to do, you know, you would, you would boil water, you know, for someone's medical treatment, you would do it, just if life was in danger, you would violate Shabbat in any form or any capacity. This is part of the time, the medication thing? Medication is part of the time, yes. Um, but even if life is not in danger, since the, this is a rabbinic extension of the prohibition against grinding, the rabbis were more lenient when it came to medication, and so even for a, a ailment which is not dangerous but is sufficiently uh, an ailment that it would divert you from your normal behavior, is sufficient to overcome the barrier to take medication on Shabbat. So what that means, you have a headache yeah, that's so bad that you're going to go lie down instead of uh, hanging out with your friends. Or, uh, you know, your, your friends are going out for a walk, and you would go out for a walk, or you would normally read a book in the afternoon, or go to school in the morning, and I have a headache, I think I just want to lie down. So, it's not grave danger, it's not a serious illness, but it reaches that threshold where um, it's bad enough that we would say, take a Tylenol, take an Advil, and then you're okay, and then, and then you know, don't, don't feel that bad. Okay, but merely, but sometimes, I don't know, I sometimes, like I get like a, I don't have a headache, but like I might get a headache, I'll take a Tylenol right now, because I feel the headache coming on. So I wouldn't do that on Shabbat. On Shabbat, I'd wait until, okay, this headache is actually, it's a real headache right now, and it's so bad that my behavior is modified, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do what I would otherwise do, or I want, don't wanna do what I would otherwise do, so then at that point, you can take the medication and, and try to get better. And if it's medication you're taking every day, you can take it on Shabbat as well, if it's part of a, you know, 
prescription or something that you're taking every day that knows it's intentional. Is there anything about like time, I guess this kind of goes back to prayer times really, but like is there a time that you should be taking regular medication in relation to like shock rate or other? I don't think so. I mean, I think you probably should take it the same, depending on, the, you may, maybe you're supposed to take it the same time every day, so that there, there is no time of day when you should take medication other than what is medically Like best. it doesn't apply the same way that eating? Or? No, it does not. I mean, you have to eat them and take the medication with food, so then it would be better to take the medication at a time when it's logically preferable to eat. But uh, if it doesn't need to be taken with food, then you could take it whatever, whatever you're going to remember easiest to take it. I mean, it matters. Medication is not, it's not food. It's not, it's not um, a pill is naturally kosher, right? You're not eating it. You're not, you're not intaking it for caloric benefit. You're taking it because it has some chemical properties that are going to be helpful, right? So. How about flavored telling? No. Okay. A what? I was, was going to say like flavored telling a lot. But if you I'm like it, yeah. well, if you like it, you say bravo. If you don't, you don't. Oh really? Should if I you're, call it right? If you're, if if you're, if you're eating it, you know, not swallowing it, but you're consuming it. So I don't know, like what, like a chewable vitamin or something. If you're eating it, yeah. then it should be kosher, and oh. then you should say bracha. If you're taking it as medication, not for food, not for not for nutrition, not for food, but because it's ailment, you know, it's responding to an ailment. Then, especially if you're swallowing a pill, it doesn't have to be kosher, it doesn't have you know, to yeah. be rough on that. But, but I heard that if you enjoy it, like if it's flavored and you like the flavor, you should say it rough. So that makes sense, because you're benefiting, but you still like, like, like kids' tannin all over. Or if you like robitussin. No. Then you'd have to, but it has to be kosher. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know, I think you'd have to make sure that it was kosher. I mean, if, you're, mm -hmm. if you go down that route, I think it really, I, 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 would, I would not need, I would not say that robitussin has to be kosher, because you're not taking, even though you're swallowing it, it has a, you're swallowing it, it has a flavor and a taste, and maybe you enjoy the taste, so that that's a little, sounds like food in that regard, so maybe, but uh, you're really taking it for health reasons. For, to, because you're sick, and it's gonna help you. Mm -hmm. If you take water to swallow a pill, you wouldn't have to say breakfast for that either, right, you know? So, okay. Okay. <laughs> Next. Uh, Maraki is sifting. This is sort of after you sort, after you grind, you have your flour, you put it through a sieve. Um, it, it's very hard to uh, distinguish Maraki from Bomer. It seems to be very, very similar. The sifting and the sorting are very, very similar. Merakhe. Uh, Merakhe, yeah, can be distinguished from the malachas of Bomer and Zoreh, but the fact that this malacha can only be transgressed with the use of a sifting or shredding device. So Bomer, you can do, you pick out your, the bad cherry from the bowl of cherries, that's a prohibited form of Bomer. Whereas Merakhe is only using a sifter. It's a distinct form of sorting. A little less relevant, don't use a sifter on shredding, okay? That's pretty, uh, Oh, you know, but, 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 but I'll just say, what about a filter, a sifter filter that you're using for, you can use a pretty filter on Shabbat. What? I was just going to ask. Good, very good. Okay, so the answer is yes, because the thing that's being removed is not something that's discernible, or that is, like the water was good, was safe to drink, and was tasted fine even without it. You prefer to have it pretty filtered, because, you know, that's, you know, you're a fancy pants kind of person, so that's, that's your choice, but in fact, the water was fine before. And what if it wasn't fine, like in, if in Michigan? If it wasn't fine before, then you wouldn't be able to, then you wouldn't be able to, um, to, to do it on Shabbat. You could you have to just buy a bottle before. Or, or, or pretty filter it before. Yeah. It's not safe to, it's literally, it's actually not safe to drink without filtering, then you can't filter it on Shabbat. Mm. If so, it's just that you prefer, you think it's better or more wholesome to have filtered water, then you can do it on Shabbat. So but then if you're in like danger, sorry. I was going to say, so like if you were going to go pump water from Lake Michigan. That would be an example where you're only violating this one, or you'd be taking the good water that you want to drink out, but you can't sift it if you use some kind of water filter pump. Right, right. So, well, you're also taking... I was trying to think of an example where you can violate only this and not... Without violating it. Uh, so I, I think I would say, I would say Mara I don't know if you can violate Meraki without also violating Burr. I would just say, um, there, you know, the, the, the type of borer that involves a strainer or a sifter is called barakid. I don't think you could 
I don't think you could do one without the other. I don't think you do Meraki without Hoer also. That's a good, that's a good, I like your way of thinking, that's good. Um, right, so, yeah, tap order that is safe, but that most people would filter. That's not Meraki. Milk that has begun to curdle slightly, but is not soured or spoiled. Wine containing a small degree of sediment that most people would prefer filtered out. Tea containing a small bit of leaves that most people would prefer to filter out. So that, so that's not, you're right, that's not, um, that's not a biblical prohibition because it's, it's fine. It's, it's a little bit cloudy, but not slightly tainted, but not so bad. If it's not a biblical prohibition, that would be a rabbinic prohibition. So it's permissible are things that are basically clear, okay? So the drinking water faucet in most homes are fitted with small filters called aerators. Nevertheless, turning on the tap water on Shabbos does not pose a fresh rocket because the water is drinkable to most people as it is. This is because the public water supply in most municipalities in the United States undergoes numerous stages of filtration and purification before reaching the average home. Therefore, the use of the faucet aerator is merely an additional and large and necessary precaution. The same will be true for a Brita filter or right? So technically, like, taking water out of the faucet is already Yes, filtered. exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Exactly. All right. Oh, using a colander or a sieve would also be right. You know, so if you, you, you have some vegetables and you're, you, you, you know, let's say you have a, a stew, or chicken soup, and you have a slotted spoon, as you're serving it, that could be a problem, because you, because the liquid all drains out as you're serving it. So you should really, so slotted spoons can be a problem, aren't you? I was just thinking about rinsing fruit and As opposed to a colander. Yeah. Well, the colander is not, the colander is just keeping the fruit in place as the water washes over. The colander is not, you're not sorting, it's not like a mixture of fruit and water that you're separating using the colander. Oh, you're just putting them in the colander and running water. That's fine. That's okay. Um, but if I was just in a can of black beans, I shouldn't. But if you're going to get that, it could be a problem. Or you have olives, you put the olives in the colander. That could be a problem. Can you put it, can you pour it out of, of the, the can, though? Because that's separating it also. You can pour it out of the can. Because it's not using it. You can take olives, you take, you open the can. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open the can to the other point. You pour them into a bowl. And, just, and, and then you take the olives out, and then you're taking the what one, you like. or it'll be so what you like with what you don't want, using your hands, a fork, um, and you're for immediate consumption. But you wouldn't take a can of olives and pour out the juice. Correct. Okay. Yeah, good. Very good. It seems yeah. actually kind of easy. Like, the can of food seems like borer is fine, but this one's not. That's an example. Because if you strained olives, yes. you would get the olives that you wanted. Right, you can pour the olives into a jar, and then yeah. pick them out one at a time. You can't pour them through a strainer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That would be more accurate. Very good, very good. Okay. Oh, what if you use something to put rice in their salt shaker to absorb, so it doesn't get all clotted together with moisture? Have you ever seen that? That mm -hmm. one's yeah. fine, right? Because you're not trying to, you're not trying to eat the rice. Well, like no, because when you mixture. sprinkle the salt, you're actually sifting out the rice because the salt goes through the shaker. It fits oh. to the holes, the rice doesn't. So the rice is being, it's like a strain. If it's not bow rare, it's maraki, yeah. right? You're straining and keeping the rice back. I thought I read something that thought it was okay. I think you're wrong. It seems like I'm wrong. <laughs> if no other salt is available, when we remove the perforated cap of the salt shaker, it's spill out a quantity of salt together with whatever grains of rice also spill out onto a plate or other surface. Want to then carefully pinch up, for example, the thumb and forefinger, small amounts of salt from the mixture of salt and unwanted rice. This from a selecting is permitted under the rule of Ocha Mitzvah. You're taking salt from the rice, using your hand, and you're doing it, um, right? You may only remove the desired salt from the rice, but may not remove the unwanted salt from the rice. But that you can't use the, the, the shaker, because that's, the holes in the top of the shaker is like a, it's basically a sieve. That's only if there's rice in it, or yeah. in general? No, no, if it's general, then, then the shaker is just um, slowing the pouring out of rice and keeping it, helping it. And that's fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're not using a tea bag. Can you lift the tea bag out of the uh, cup of tea and throw it out? You can't like squeeze it, but if it still has water. Uh, yeah. So if you take the tea bag and you kind of wrap it around your spoon and squeeze all the last bit of tea out, yeah. and you're straining out the liquid from the, and the tea bag is acting like a sieve. Keeping the leaves in but place. But isn't the tea bag always acting like a sieve? Because you're, it's holding the leaves in. You're putting it into yeah, the. So if it's in the. But it's kind of like I guess like the colander with the fruit in it. It's yes. like a placeholder. Yes. If it's in the tea and there's liquid all around, it's all flowing through the tea bag, and that's fine. The only problem would be when you lift it out. 
it, then it, it drains and it's So what you can do is you can just leave the tea bag into the bottom of the cup, or you can lift it out with a spoon and take some tea with it so you're not straining it, or maybe even just lift it out and put it down and pop it down quickly. And don't, 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 don't hold it in the air or dripping for a few minutes, just lift it and put it down, and that's probably also okay. What's the word for this? Is this still Moroccan? This is still Moroccan. Okay. All Moroccan. Yeah. I feel like that would it would be more okay to get it, take it out with a spoon and leave it there until you finish the tea because when you finish the tea, now the cup is empty and now the tea bag is sipping water if it's still. Uh, well, at the very bottom, it's just like you know, like you start drinking and put it down. Even if you take it out, then it's just earlier sipping yeah. water. Okay. Well, I mean, but not I mean, like with a spoon thing. with some tea in it. Yeah. I think it's better. Like, yeah, yeah, well, then you, or when you drink, you leave a little bit at the bottom. You don't, you don't, you don't dry the cup. You know, you know. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's do. Um, we would only use tea bags, not loose tea. Like, so you know how there's so loose, loose tea. Loose yeah, tea. Yeah, it's tea British, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> right, so right. So before you lose tea through a uh, thing, yeah. that would be a problem. Or if you put one of the ones that you like, put your keys into into the thing. Yes. Okay. Yes, let's think about that. Because uh, that's a reusable tea bag, essentially. Yeah, so they're like little balls you can like fill. Oh, those things are yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah, ball. yeah, yeah. So that would be no worse than a tea bag. Right. Just use that would be the same but as a tea bag. But pouring it straight into the strainer, that would be bad. Pouring the like yeah. the little the hot water, you get the tea over the cup. Yeah. The, in like a mini strainer for the tea, and then you yeah, pour yeah, hot water. Yeah, that's yeah, bad. Yes, I think so. Okay. That would be straight. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. So don't get too fancy with your tea. Or like fill your cup with water first, and then. Well, again, there's all, uh, a whole other issue about bishol and cooking with teas, which we'll get well, to. Also, get. the hot water. Whole lot of issues. A lot of issues with tea. <laughs> a lot of issues with tea. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah, but just, just in terms of the tea bag, assuming that the tea bag can be in there, you know. Yeah. Okay. In the first place, I and mean, we've solved those problems, we'll, we'll get to the other things. Okay. Uh, one more lash. Lash is kneading. Once you have your dough, your flour, you make dough, and the kneading together is also. So um, the definition would be. Um, it's the basic definition. Lash is defined as the combining of tiny particles into a solid or semi-solid mass. It means of a liquid medium. This is essentially what occurs when dough is made. Many particles of flour melt and fuse together into a solid mass when water is added. According to many post game, merely adding and mixing liquids into a thick sauce or pasty substance is lash. Okay. Um, so you're making the mass? And then also kneading as well. Making and uh, Play-Doh. Making play doh? No, like oh, play doh. Like oh, using play doh. Using play doh would be a problem for another reason. No, no, no. But I think it would be a problem of 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 um, uh, of what's it called? Of, uh, yeah, I can't think of the name right now. But you can't, you can't change the shape of something solid. Oh, oh like why you can't use bar soap? Right. Exactly. Wait, so this lash is, is it like adding water to something already solid or making it making it okay you can't pour water and flour even that mixing you can't uh, mix water and flour into a dough even if you weren't the one to pour it either one is bad okay um, so what are some other practical examples of it yeah you can't mix oil fat mayonnaise margarine or butter into mashed avocado even though the mashed avocado was already a semi solid substance beforehand you can't add milk and, uh, and mix milk or juice into mashed banana because doing so is an act of lash. It is for it to mash banana even though the natural juices cause the pulverized banana to cling into a thick paste. Um, it's because the act of binding the natural juices of the substance does not resemble, right? it's just, that's just mashing a thing into itself. You're just, for a baby, you can mash banana to feed to a baby. It's not combining with something else to so you mix can't make with a smoothie, you know, take, take the actual, like, yeah. Electric out of it. So you could do a hand yeah. smoothie. Probably not. Probably can't do that. Probably not. Yeah. Um, Those were very specific and particular examples. Like, I mean, it was what mixing margarine with avocado and oil. Like, I mean, who would even do that? Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, can you mix that, like, oil onto like, hummus? Mix it? Yeah, because that's already a paste. I think we're just sort of adding. You sort of have a plate of hummus, you pour some oil on it, I think that's okay. So, so you, you, you know, how is that, that'd be like adding hot sauce so different from food. adding butter to avocado? Because you're making something, I don't know, like, I think the, the, the hummus was already a paste before. So let's, let's see some examples. So avocado you're mashing it into itself. So if you just mash up avocado. I think that's okay. If no liquid was added to the finely ground vegetables before Shabbos, one may on Shabbos add only a lot of oil, vinegar, or other liquid at once. For the purpose of producing a loose mixture, which is not a lush mixture, right? It's too. It's also as it's not dough-like. It also wouldn't count. 
For example, the chopped vegetables are normally placed in the bowl first with the oil added afterward. This order should be reversed. The oil first and the vegetables second. The mixture may then be stirred slowly in an unusual fashion by using one's bare or rubber gloved hand and finger or with a handle with a spoon instead of with a spoon itself. So in that way, you can mix mayonnaise, ketchup, or vinegar into pure ground horseradish by reversing use of order. Um, if you forgot to add the wine to your haroset for Pesach. So you reverse the order, add a lot of wine so that it's loose and not dough-like, and then stirring slowly with your finger or the, or the handle of a spoon. Or of a spoon. It seems like there's not much that hardens instantly. Right? Besides, well, water, the flat water flour thing. Yeah. So it's like the you know, that right? It's like pretty much the only yeah, practical so. example, right? Like flour and water. <coughs> yeah, another example here. Yeah. An avocado margarine. Okay. Does that it make it stiffer? I don't know. I can see that. Is you put try? butter yeah. on bread and then avocado on bread, like. That's fine. So no avocado toast. You could do that. That's what I'm saying. No but they said no, you can't put all oil in avocado. That's exactly what I'm saying. Avocado toast. That's what you do. You put like lemon. So the most severe powder to make a blula, a very dense, non pourable dough, right? Bread dough, cookie yeah. dough, thick cake icing, paste like substances, thick pudding, thick cooked cereal, moist mud, that kind of really dough like to make that or to knead that would be a, would be a real problem. Okay. That could be a biblical prohibition. Okay. Um, well, you can pour it. You can't make it. But a very okay. batter-like mixture that's pourable, that's not true lush, and that's not a, a biblical prohibition. It still might be a rabbinic, but um, yeah, so cake batter, loose baby cereal preparation, you know, might be okay. There are ways to do. There are ways to do baby period, uh, baby, baby cereal though. And things that are totally uh, liquid, it pours very easily. So making instant coffee, right? So like that's that's not pouring, you know, like I pour my instant coffee mix into water and I stir it up. That's not kneading. That's just right. I, I, right. It's still it's still liquid. It was liquid before. I add some solid in. It dissolves. Now it's a coffee. It's a different substance, but it's still liquid. So it's so like oatmeal. Yeah, yeah, thing like oatmeal. Like instant oatmeal could be okay. It's not because it's because it's so not. You're adding a liquid to a salad, it becomes. So it because it's um, because it, it doesn't come like tough like kneading. So there's tricks about instant oatmeal because it turns into a thick paste. I think if you have enough water that it's a loose paste, it's okay. Do you find that example there? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no Could cake. you use hot water from the sink? So then <laughs> you wouldn't even be making oatmeal. Yeah. You could use hot water from the room. Oh, that's true. Okay. Right, from your Shabbat. I, yeah, I forgot about <laughs> You the... couldn't do it right from the sink. So, or like, you obviously wouldn't use a kettle or something. Like no, you just want to use your big guy. Uh, and uh, uh should she um have a third cup? Second yeah, mm -hmm. I don't need it yet. I don't know, the second cup is probably enough for oh okay, no, let's say. Um okay. Anything else I think uh still water in my yeah, so the, a mixture of large p bits or chunks of food that clings together liquid or oil is not a lush mixture because individual pieces don't melt into a single mass. So you can make vegetable salad and dressing, coleslaw and dressing, potato salad, tuna fish that's not finely chopped, chopped liver that's not finely ground, chopped eggs that are not finely ground into a sort of egg salad. That's all okay because you're not, it's not dough, it's not tiny pieces that still remain discernible and... Uh, so you can chop eggs? Like chop eggs and put it in a salad kind of Yeah, again, the, well, the, this usually of tohen, because it's not going to be super small, and you're going to do it, you can't do it in advance, it has to be right for, before, prior to that meal. And it's not going to be a shivlash to make the egg salad if it's going to be still discernible in, uh, you know, in pieces, not, not like a finely ground, uh, you know, mush of, of egg salad. All right, let's pause here. Uh, the next topic is bishol, which is a really big one that's cooking, which is big and complicated and important. Um, and when are we going to meet next? I'm going on vacation for three weeks, and then when I come back, it's the holidays. Uh, almost, not quite. So, but we should be able to find at least one more time. Let's spend right. two more times before the holidays. Let's, let's see.
You want to scope it? No. It's on video, you can say. <laughs> I think Monday the 27th is going to work. Maybe a little bit. Let's see what time. Sure. Monday the 27th. Of August. Monday the 27th of August. August 27th. We should be able to be a little bit earlier. Hopefully, let's, let's try 8 o'clock. Here? Yeah. Well, you, you, there's a lot of, you know, hopefully, you, you know, stay tuned to the bulletin, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Stop. All right. Thanks so much, guys.